You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and in New Concord on Orbit TV 9. Coming up on this edition of the show, Sophie Wheeler and Tessa Peters have the details on the upcoming Buckeye Trail Tri-M Honor Society fundraiser dinner. Sammy Schott stops by from OSU Extension to talk 4-H, and we find out what's going on with Cambridge City Schools from Superintendent Dan Kaufman. It's all ahead on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios, it's Talk of the Town with Perry Baranich. Welcome to a brand new edition of Talk of the Town. We're coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. And as always, thank you U.S. Bank for allowing us right. to be here. Buckeye Trail Tri-M Honor Society is holding a fundraiser dinner. And here to tell us all about it, we have Sophie Wheeler, who is the secretary, and Tessa Peters, who is the president of the Honor Society. Mm -hmm. So good to have you guys on the show and nice to meet yeah, you both. Good to be here. Yeah. Thanks so, for having us. So um, let's start out here. Buckeye Trail Tri-M. Mm -hmm. What does Tri-M M stand for? Uh, Tri-M is Modern Music Masters. So this is a music honor society. Absolutely. Yeah, we're basically just solidifying music in our community, really reaching out, being there for everybody, just showing how important music is for everybody and how enjoyable it can be. And, and Tessa, you being the, uh, the president, you know, is music important for you in Absolutely. your life? Absolutely. Music is the number one thing in my life. <laughs> what uh, Musically, what do you do? Um, I play clarinet and I also sing in the choir at Buckeye Trail. Okay, and and what about you? Uh, I play saxophone and I play a number of other instruments. And oh, so I you're multi instrumental. Y yes, yes, yeah. trying to be. But um, uh, this is this the honor society then is perfect for you guys who love music. Yeah, absolutely. How many members do you have currently? Uh, we have about 15 members. How does someone become a member? Um, well, we just it's open to everybody. If you're in a music performing class, so anybody in band, anybody in choir, um, and we want to keep it at about a C average okay. for your regular grades and at least an A for your performing grades. And you just kind of come in and as long as you're really participating and showing that you are uh, have good leadership, you're a good member of the community and you really want to be out there and helping people just enjoy music and appreciate music, then you're a perfect fit. Do you guys want to pursue music as you go forward in yes, life? Yes, yes. All right. We, I think we both do. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. You know, like Adam and I, musicians, you know, once you have it in you, it's in you. Absolutely. My foot goes all the time. I don't know if yours <laughs> yep. does or not. But let's talk about the fundraising. Are coming mm -hmm. up. Uh, well, our fundraiser dinner is on March 16th. March 16th at 6 p.m. in the Buckeye Trail Elementary Commons. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's going to take place? Uh, we're going to have a speaker there. Miss <laughs> uh, Miss Robinson, and she's a cello instructor through CA House, and she lives in Barnesville, so she also does lessons there. And she's going to talk about music therapy. And. That's that. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I love cello music. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Our daughter used to play mm -hmm. cello, and it's just it's a cool thing. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I, I guess you know you're going to have a dinner. So yes. what what all is that? Uh, we're going to be having a potato bar. So kind of oh. like a potato buffet. Well, we had pierogies on the last show. Now we have potato bars. I'm all, I'm down for that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just all kind of different different all, potatoes. All different toppings. Uh, you get a big potato, and then you can just. just Go wild. Absolutely. You can yeah. load it up as you, you wish. Mr. Bronich, you need to leave. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, they'll tell me that's all you can eat, that's for <laughs> sure. But uh, ticket prices, uh, how seven, much does it cost? Seven pre sale and, and ten at the door. Yeah. And where can you get tickets? Um, you can get them from any Tri-M member. And if you don't know the Tri-M members, we have a Facebook page, an Instagram, and a Twitter. Mm -hmm. So you can contact us through there. Or if you don't have any of those, you can also call the school, and they'll connect you with our band director. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's coming up, and uh, you can get the tickets now. Mm -hmm. um, will you? You know, will it be a, a music-themed event? Will you have music going on? Um, How will that be? Kind of. We're gonna be. All the all the tickets and everything, it's all going to be, and we'll be accepting donations. It's all to go to an organization called Sam's Fans. Oh, okay. Um, it's an organization out through Columbus. Okay. Um, it was made for Samantha McCarthy. She had Faconi anemia, 
and she died in October 2009. Mm. So her parents organized this mm. um, fund, and it just goes to support music therapy and art therapy, just to get instruments, art supplies, anything anybody needs, so that uh, they can enjoy music therapy just as much as Samantha did. That's a great cause. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, ticket prices are how much? No, seven dollars pre-sold and ten at the door. Mm -hmm. And ten at the door. Yes. And it's take it gives the uh, the time. When were the doors open? Uh, six p.m. Six p.m. And then uh, all the event will start uh, at six, or will it start? After we'll that. we'll have some leeway time for okay. you. Okay. So, so it's going to be flexible. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it people can kind of just pile it'll in. It'll be a relaxed the atmosphere. Yes. Yeah. And you know, cruise the potato bar. Yeah. Yeah. Just and cruise our, the potato bar. Our speaker ball. will actually also be playing her cello. Oh. I love, do you like? I love cello music. Yes. Absolutely. I love. Wow. I love orchestra music. Yeah. So uh, what year are you in school? Uh, we're both seniors. Both seniors. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you have plans for when you graduate? Are um, you going to attend college? Do you I'm. Know yet? Uh, looking between Baldwin Wallace and Marietta, both oh. for a music theater major. Okay, what about you, Tess? Um, I'm going to Marietta for a music therapy and education. So you guys are pursuing music. Yep. Yeah. It's that yeah. big of a part of your mm -hmm. life. Wow, that is so cool. Well, Buckeye Trail Tri M Modern Music Masters Honor Society fundraiser dinner. Uh, again, it is coming up when, where, and, and what time? Um, March 16th at 6 p.m. in the Buckeye Trail Elementary Commons. And then the tickets are seven dollars pre-sold and ten at the door. All right, sounds like it's going to be a great event. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Everybody come out and attend and help yes. out because the proceeds are going to a great cause. Yes. I've been talking with Sophie Wheeler and Tessa Peters, Buckeye Trail Tri-M Honor Society. Thank mm -hmm. you so much Thanks for so coming much in, for and we hope us. the dinner goes very, very well. And everything you do once you graduate goes well as well. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, back with more talk of the town right after this. of the town. We'll be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Bill Dixon finds and sells some unique items and hard-to-find local collectibles. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great, great place to live, work, and, and play. play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the Classic Difference for yourself. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. Welcome back and thanks for watching Talk of the Town. Well, we always enjoy having Sammy Shaw on. She is the FS, FCS, but your title is just killing me. Yes. FCS and 4-H Program Coordinator, OSU Extension, Noble County. Yes. Do you ever get a chance to stop? Not really. <laughs> Good to see Good you. Good to see you. Um, what, is, what is FCS? Um, FCS stands for Family and Consumer Sciences. Okay. So a lot of people when they were in school, they took home ec. Okay. Um, so that's in there. We focus on three main things with FCS. So it's healthy life or healthy relationships, uh, healthy finances, and healthy people. So food and um, looking at healthy finances, doing a lot of budgeting, um, parenting classes, and different things. So. Do they still have home ec in school? Some schools do. Some schools do? Some do, some don't. Um, we have two schools in our district, and I know that they have one home ec teacher who has split 
between the grade school and the high school, and then the other one just doesn't have one. So wow. we try to fill the gaps where we need sure. to. So they bring me in, and I do things every now and then with them. You're here today to talk about 4-H because yes. it's 4-H time, right? It is. It is 4-H time. Uh, Guernsey County is actually celebrating their 4-H week this week. Okay. I know they've had the courthouse um, lit up green mm -hmm. in support of the 4-H, mm -hmm. so that's wonderful. Um, Noble County is actually celebrating their 4-H week next week. Um, so I thought this was a great time to come in. Oh, you know, perfect. Yeah. Do a little promo for 4-H and um, get the kids involved. Um, it's a great organization. We were talking earlier. Noble County has either the highest or second highest youth percentage involved in 4-H in the state of Ohio. Um, so that shows that a lot of kids are very involved. You know, and th th it's, um, it's great to know that because 4-H is such a wonderful program. Let's hear, for folks who don't know what 4-H is about, what is it? Okay, well 4-H, the 4-Hs actually stand for something. So head, heart, hands, and health. Okay. So with your head, you know, we give kids challenges. They're raising livestock projects. Mm -hmm. They're taking care of animals. Mm -hmm. They're taking these miscellaneous projects. We're teaching them how to problem solve you know think through things mm -hmm. and then with their heart you know we want them to um, have compassion you know work with others learn new things they're taking care of those animals mm -hmm. so you yeah. know they some do become very attached to those projects mm -hmm. um, then with our hands you know we're going out and we're doing community service it's required that each club in our county participates in a community service project because we ask the community for a lot of things and it's always nice to give back to those mm -hmm. and then lastly our health health yeah. is always an important thing because mm -hmm. if you are not healthy yourself then you know you can't take care of these animals you can't fully put yourself out there and do your best yeah 4-H you know with the sheer number of people that are involved in our area in 4-H 4-H is the reason folks that we have such such outstanding young people yes here it and really we is. really really do and that's to be commended but uh, it's enrollment time mm -hmm. is there a deadline coming up yes uh, the enrollment deadline is April 1 uh, with that following falling on a Sunday um, we Noble County is extending theirs till Monday, April okay. 2nd. Okay. Um, and if anybody from Guernsey County, you know, is thinking about enrolling, getting their papers in, I encourage them to call the extension office just to make sure theirs, you know, is Monday, maybe it's Friday they want their stuff in. So just to make sure that you're not missing that deadline to join. Okay. And there's, uh, you brought a lot of stuff with yes, you. Yes, I did. What, what so, do you have? <laughs> um, these are our family guides. Okay. So the family guide um, talks about every project that we have to offer through 4-H. Okay. And there are a bunch, aren't there? There are a ton. So a lot of people, when they think of 4-H, they think of the livestock projects sure. they see at the sure. fair. Yeah. Um, with 4-H, they also offer, you know, natural resources, food and nutrition, clothing, leadership projects, um, and a lot of state trips for our teens to get involved. We have the Clover Buds. Mm -hmm. So this book just kind of summarizes up every and project And the book is packed have. full page after page. It is. It's full of information, um, and it also is really nice for those who are just joining to see what the beginner level projects are. Oh, okay. The advanced, the intermediate. Sure. So some sure. of them continue on. Okay. Um, so this is the family guide. I also brought some other books that have been, you know, revamped or renamed. So beginning fishing. Beginning fishing. So with the natural resources and everything mm -hmm. here, you know, it's mm -hmm. usually a big project. So beginning fishing was one designed by me. It's one of our uh, clothing and textiles. Wow. So the kids can design their own clothes. Oh, that's cool. Um, wear them. It's my home. This is a um, interior design project. So you take your room. You can redo something. You can take a chair, re, you know, purpose it. Different can I things. take that with me? <laughs> <laughs> right? It's a great project. And then the mm. new one that came out this year is Everyday Food and Fitness. So another food and nutrition project. You know, the kids like to cook. They're in the kitchen with mom or dad or grandma or grandpa. Um, and putting it all together and in a book for them to showcase. And, and something like that, you know, uh, cooking uh, and, and incorporating healthier things. I yes. noticed the picture, you know, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables on there. Uh, you know, that's filtering its way into the young people's now, Correct. isn't it? Yes. Trying to get the mindset right. Right. Um, and the last thing I want to say, um, the age requirements did change a little bit for 4-H this year. Oh, okay. So um, to be a Clover Bud, it's still the same as it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. You need to be five and enrolled in kindergarten. Um, and then to be a 4-H member, to take these projects, um, maybe animals to the fair, you need to be eight 
and in third grade, or you can be nine and in any grade. Okay. So if you, um, we're finding out that in the state of Ohio, you know, we're holding kids back um, to make sure that they're getting all the information. So if you have a nine-year-old as of January 1, that's in the second grade. Okay. They can be in 4-H. Okay, great. Yes. And and they're probably chomping at the bits. And oh, folks yes. who have been in 4-H for a long time, you know, I'm sure they tell their friends, hey, you need to be in 4-H because it's a lot of fun. Exactly. So, and then we just find out now that a lot of the kids don't live on farms. Mm -hmm. um, things are changing. So, mm -hmm. with this family guide, I really encourage you know kids to take time with their families and look at this family guide because there are projects that don't require you to have an animal. Um, you find something you're passionate about, and you can take all those projects in that category. And you just mentioned with the family, this is something 4-H is something that the whole family can get involved with. Yes. Uh, you know, when I was in 4-H, I was a 4-H member for 11 years, mm -hmm. um, and then my parents had my brother. Mm -hmm. We actually, it worked out perfectly. We never showed together. We were never in 4-H together, so there was none of that competition. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it really takes the whole family, you know, raising an animal, taking these projects, getting to and from, you know, certain events, 4-H meetings. So it really does take a community to raise the Well, child. find out more about 4-H. You can get in touch with Sammy yes. and she'll tell you all about it. Sammy Schott, FCS and 4-H program coordinator, OSU Extension, Noble County. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Tell your mom I said hi. I will. Hey, <laughs> okay. hey, back with more Talking to Town right after this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. The Old Country Loft features country curtains in stock or order that special design to customize your decor. You can also pick out braided or decorative woven rug from her large selection in stock. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash talk of the town show and stay up to date. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We're coming to you from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. And uh, my next guest is Dan Kaufman, who is the superintendent of Cambridge City Schools. Always a pleasure to have you on hey, and find out me. what's going on with the uh, Cambridge City School system. Absolutely. <clears throat> you know, our biggest initiative right now in the district is uh, uh, finding a way to educate our community that there is an absolute need uh, for passage of a new money emergency operating levy here in Cambridge City Schools. Okay. It's been a while since you've had new money come in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, our last new money operating levy in Cambridge City Schools was in 1992. Um, there was money that came into the district to build the facilities back in the early 2000s, but from an operation standpoint, uh, there has not been new money since 1992. Okay, this is uh, is called an uh, emergency operating levy, correct? Yeah, it, and, it, and it's titled an emergency operating levy because we forecast uh, a deficit spending model over the next few years, where we're essentially spending more money than we're bringing into the district. So we feel the need to put a levy in place that will fill that void or fill that deficit. 
but in my nearly two years as superintendent here at Cambridge, um, the thing that I've heard over, overwhelmingly uh, is a tremendous amount of pride in what being a Bobcat means mm -hmm. and the desire from our community to ensure that Cambridge is a key player in the educational options for uh, students in Guernsey County and surrounding areas, that people want to know that Cambridge is putting forth a tremendous, well-rounded education for the students who attend here at Cambridge. I know a lot of your time spent right now is going out to different uh, places, organizations, and, and just talking about this, correct? Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, Our treasurer and I are spending a tremendous amount of time each week uh, meeting with essentially anybody who's willing to sit down and talk, and, and uh, anyone who's watching this, I would love for them to uh, reach out to our office and uh, ask to schedule a meeting. Anybody who wants to become more educated as they consider this decision they're going to make on May 8th on our on our levy, we're more than willing to come and talk to individuals or more than willing to come and talk to different groups and help educate them about what we're trying to accomplish with this levy. I know a lot of people when they when they're asked to vote for a levy, uh, bottom line, they just want to know what's it going to cost them. Yeah, you know, and, how much is it going to cost me? Sure, and I think that's a that's a normal reaction, and uh, we're, we're trying to put out information through the county auditor's website, uh, through information on our on our promotional flyer that we have in place for the levy that uh, that truly shows what it's going to cost somebody um, based on the value of their home. Mm -hmm. All of those numbers um, come into question. Um, where did the math occur to, mm -hmm. to figure those out? Mm -hmm. So we went directly to the source with uh, the Guernsey County Auditor's Office. They've been great to work with uh, throughout this process, and uh, we believe um, uh, believe in their numbers and, and have confidence that the calculator on their website that's coming out uh, will be able to answer that question. You have a, a bullet point <laughs> card uh, that has a lot of things on here, but you've listed these under five buckets. Yeah, correct? really, I take, uh, I believe there's 14 items on that rack card. Um, I, I look at it from five different perspectives, uh, safety for students, uh, higher level academics, facilities, athletics, and performing arts, and what can we accomplish inside of a new money levy that can fill many gaps in each of those five areas. Uh, safety, uh, there's no more important time than today to be mm -hmm. talking about That's true. Uh, school safety, yeah. uh, the need to have a school resource officer in place at Cambridge mm -hmm. City Schools is important. Mm -hmm. We want to maintain that. Uh, the ability to look for um, options to help ensure that our buildings are, are more safe than they are today is, is an absolute uh, must-have from, from what we're hearing from our community, from our parents, from our students, um, from our staff that, you know, we want a safe environment here at Cambridge. Uh, upper level academics, <clears throat> uh, we, we really need to be able to improve academically through the use of technology, uh, specifically down at our elementary buildings and into our, uh, into our high school more than what we're currently doing with an initiative to become one-to-one -one with technology mm -hmm. where students have the ability to be on some sort of device on a daily basis or on a regular basis as the teacher uh, so chooses. Um, from, a, from a facility standpoint, it's, it's interesting. Uh, a lot of individuals who I meet with in the community reference the new schools. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the new schools are 15 years old. That's hard to believe. It is. Yeah, I can remember my previous employment. I, I can remember when these buildings were built, mm -hmm. and, and it seems like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. But it's been 15 years, and, and we have beautiful facilities, and uh, our, our community needs to be proud of the facilities that they provided this district 15 years ago. But in order to keep them where they're at today, we need to be able to reinvest in those. And, uh, and we're coming up on the time where we're going to have to look at putting new roofs on, mm -hmm. uh, doing blacktop mm -hmm. repairs, HVAC mm -hmm. repairs, and, mm -hmm. uh, and just general things that, that come up when you manage the amount of square footage that we manage in the district. Oh, and people you know, understand how much that costs on an individual basis at their home. Just think about that multiplied when you're talking about a big complex. Yeah, when we start to talk about putting roofs on, on in each of our five buildings, we're really talking about uh, millions of dollars yeah. uh, potentially to put whether you put a shingle roof or a metal roof and that's always a question in this district of metal roofs or shingle roofs but regardless of which direction you go it's going to be a seven figure expense uh, for mm -hmm. the district HVAC uh, costs are seven figure costs you know you're, you're spending hundreds of thousands and in some cases millions of dollars trying to keep these facilities where we want them to be uh, address the misconception that hey oil and gas is here people are booming everything's making money yeah. and the schools are doing fine absolutely you know I think the oil and gas industry is tremendous for Guernsey County. It's been tremendous for southeastern Ohio. There is there is a misconception out there that with all the oil and gas industry that's that's in our general area and within Guernsey County specifically that Cambridge City Schools is benefiting from that from a financial standpoint. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we are absolutely not benefiting in any way, shape, or form financially from the oil and gas industry. Uh, no matter where those wells are, they are not in Cambridge City Schools, and uh, therefore they, they don't provide revenue for Cambridge. And, and that is a misconception that we are out it there is. battling because we're seeing a lot of neighboring districts be able to do a lot of creative things, sure. a lot of great things for their students. We're seeing uh, down into uh, Noble County and into, into Monroe County mm -hmm. some of the things that they're able to mm -hmm. accomplish because of the oil and gas industry. And um, we're, we're just not there from a revenue standpoint from oil and gas. So that's good to know. <laughs> because everybody thinks it's the other way. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It, it is benefiting Guernsey County. It is benefiting the city of Cambridge in certain ways. It's just from the, I look at things from the perspective of uh, the schools and, and it's just, it, it is not a help uh, to our school district. Okay, so. yeah, but I, 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 I know you wanted to impress on people that the shortfall in the budget, it's here. It's not out there, it's here. No, the, the shortfall is here. Uh, a lot of people re would remember from my time on, on Talk of the Town or other um, other events where we've redistricted our elementary schools. Mm -hmm. We went from three elementaries to, to two elementaries and we really truly believe that makes us better educationally but it also made us better financially. The the state government cut our budget 4%. The federal government cut our budget 17%. That's huge. Uh, we filled that initial gap. However, it's created a gap that forecast out over several years and yes absolutely the the uh, when you look at our forecast we're spending more money than than we're bringing in we've got 30 seconds final words yeah you know I hope that the community becomes educated in this. There is a tremendous amount of pride here at Cambridge City Schools, and I truly hope that people take the time and put the effort in to become educated as they look at what decision they have to make on May 8th. Um, when you look at this rack card, and if, if you okay. take the time to understand what's in the side of this, I really truly think people find value in what they are specifically interested okay. in in an education system. Okay, Dan Coffin, thanks for being on the show. Thanks, sir. For All sure. right, back to wrap it up right after to this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. That is going to do it for this edition of Talk of the Town. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks to our guests, Sophie Wheeler, Tessa Peters, Sammy Schott, and Dan Kaufman. Hey, you know we spring forward on Sunday, March 11th. That's a great time to change the batteries in your smoke detectors and your carbon monoxide detectors so you'll be safe at home, okay? So do that. For producer-director Adam Green and Perry Bronich, we'll see you next time on Talk of the Town. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Cambridge is more than just a town, this is our home. 
Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a a great great place to live, work, and play. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Ruth Dixon and her crew bring you the things you need to decorate your home with country charm and warmth. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the Classic Difference for yourself. You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9.